Welcome back. Urinary catheterization is something we have discussed just in passing during surgery one as part of a preoperative consideration, but we will be discussing this now in detail. Urinary catheterization can be done for a multitude of reasons. It could be an animal with urinary obstruction that you want to relieve, or those patients simply undergoing abdominal surgeries wherein you need to express the bladder. We will be discussing urinary catheterization for the next three lecture videos. So sit tight, get a snack, and let's begin. When animals cannot efficiently empty their bladder, a manual bladder compression is indicated. Right? Manual bladder compression is done for those with a dysfunctional bladder control and they cannot empty their bladders efficiently. Sometimes you could see this as urine dribbling, or they are repeatedly straining to pee because um, they feel that they have to, but they cannot empty their bladders efficiently. Now, this happens in patients with um, IVDD or intervertebral uh, disc disease, or those with spinal trauma, or those who underwent spinal surgery like this patient here. So for um, patients who can uh, support their weight, they are um, placed in this position and um, your, well, an absorbent pad is um, placed below it and the lower abdomen is gently pressed with your two hands. Um, in paritic animals, this can be done on lateral recumbency. Note, it is not your palms doing the compression, but your fingers put together. Once you have palpated the bladder, you put gentle pressure on it until urine comes out of the urethral orifice, as seen in this image. This is commonly done electively for um, patients undergoing the usual abdominal surgeries like space and cystotomy to make the bladder smaller making visualization of the abdominal organs easier. Now remember, this can only be done if the urethra is patent and no obstruction exists. If there is an obstruction, do not try to compress too much to prevent the rupture of the gallbladder leading to a uroabdomen. This is a life-threatening condition, and for such cases, urinary catheterization is indicated. Now, animals can show a variety of clinical signs which point to a urinary condition. Well, not like that dog right there. Some of the dogs would have their own idiosyncrasies as to how they pee. So, this is just a funny video that I, that I a funny GIF that I, that I saw. So, animals could show difficulty in urinating and we call that um, dysuria. Um, training to urinate, uh, urinate, for example, cats going into their litter boxes and then they go into this position, but then nothing comes out. That's tranguria. Sometimes tranguria could also be manifested as a painful event wherein uh, dogs and cats would actually cry out in pain. A blood tinge urine can be a hematuria or hemoglobinuria. I will leave the difference of these two for you to, uh, to research on, or if you have clinical patho right now, I think by this time you would know the difference of the two. I will not expound on that. And um, the absence of urine coming out is actually called anuria. There is still a ton of medical terminologies describing urinary pathologies, but you have your patho subject, for that. So when is urinary catheterization indicated? First off, uh, UCAT or urinary catheterization is the placement of a tube or a catheter into the urethral orifice of the animal to the urinary bladder to drain the urine. This tube keeps the urethra patent to maintain your urine drainage in cases of um, urethral obstruction and urethral strictures. This is also indicated for those patients with uh, no obstruction, but they cannot empty their bladder efficiently and you need to help them drain it. Uh, we have discussed this earlier. 
um, urine incontinence or urine dribbling or sudden bouts of urination, which can be caused by sphincter damage or insufficiency. And ectopic ureters, for one, can also be addressed uh, with urinary catheterization. Now, there are a number of commercially available urinary catheters that you may use. Um, the most common would be the silicone Foley catheters that you can see right here in this image. They're more commonly used for dogs because of the ease of placement and its self-retaining uh, feature. Self-retaining. So if you put it in a patient, there is a way for it to not be removed easily. Now, these catheters are manufactured sterile and has a balloon on one end, as you can see right here, right here, and a set of connectors on the other end. The balloon starts out deflated when you uh, take it out of its packaging, and it will only be inflated once the tip has successfully been placed within the bladder. This balloon would rest on the neck or the trigone of the bladder. Now, th this balloon retains the catheter within the bladder, so it cannot be removed from the outside. The balloon can be inflated by inserting a certain amount of saline into the red connector. Some manufacturers require a 1 ml of saline, some a 3 ml. It would depend uh, ultimately on the size of the catheter. In my experience, an 8 French catheter would require 1 ml of saline um, to be inflated into the balloon. Um, for bigger catheters like a 12 French and a 16 French, that would require 3 ml. Now, it is important for you to put the right amount of saline to inflate this balloon so that um, you could be sure that the balloon will stay inflated. Um, for example, if you have a bigger catheter that requires 3 ml, but you just um, placed 1 ml, the balloon will not be inflated as much as it can, and that could actually cause your uh, catheter to be removed easily. Now, also, this catheter is wire gu uh, guided. Okay? Um, once you open the packaging, there's actually a soft uh, wire that is um, encompassing the entire length of it. And once you, uh, it helps you when you're placing the catheter because it will um, prevent kinking or para uh, siya while it is being gently pushed into the urinary bladder through the urethra. The wire is then removed from the catheter slowly so that um, the catheter can be now connected to, to a urine bag or a collecting receptacle. Another um, catheter that are used um, would be the Tomcat catheter by its name, Tomcat. It is used for uh, cats, not necessarily just for male cats, but um, we'll discuss that more in a bit. But the, the, uh, these are called um, your Tomcat catheters. Um, they can be a simple silicone one like this one, okay? Or they can be wire guarded ones. The sizes of these catheters would be a 3.5 or a 5 uh, French catheter. Now, for those patients wherein you just need to help drain the bladder, but you don't need it to stay there. For example, those spinal patients that just needs an extra help. Um, a red rubber catheter would suffice as your uh, urinary catheter. Other important instruments you will need are sterile gloves. Yes, this is a sterile procedure. You need to scrub for it. Sterile lubricant. Uh, large volume syringes, even more than 10 ml, you could have a 25 ml or even a 35 ml, that's fine. A warm, sterile saline, importance for warm. Uh, important note, why do you need a saline that is warm? Because you would want the urethral wall to relax, and usually they do, if you use a warmer, um, more uh, a nearer to the body temperature kind of uh, saline. 
uh, non-absorbable suture material and suturing instruments if you are using a Tomcat catheter and a sterile urine sample cup for you to get uh, for you to keep the urine sample for further testing. Now, why the need for all this sterility? The catheter is sterile. You you are gloved. You have a sterile lubricating a jelly. Why the need for sterile? Remember, um, the animals um, which have urinary obstruction may just have urinary stones, but they do not have bacteria in there. All right, and it is so easy for us to contaminate it, to contaminate the urinary bladder and cause a infection if we are not careful and aseptic in urinary catheterization. That's why it's very, very important to observe surgical asepsis during this procedure. Now, sometimes a gauge 22 catheter is all that could fit into the urethral orifice. Usually, it is used to unblock urethras of small cats, or if the Tomcat catheters tend to kink, or if the urethral obstruction is very near the orifice. Right? The metal stylet is removed from the IV catheter and you just use the plastic one and it is then connected to a syringe with warm saline and lubricant um, mixed together. It is then flushed into the urethral orifice hoping it will dislodge the obstruction. Now this process is the most challenging part of unblocking cats. Uh, for a full discussion on addressing um, FUOs or feline urethral obstructions, you have a reading assignment for that. Yes, once again, a reading assignment. Uh, take some time on reading this. It is very important. It's a very good article on how to uh, carefully place and successfully place your urinary catheter in blocked cats. So take notes and um, I will continue on. If you are catheterizing an animal for continuous urine drainage, for example, you are doing a procedure on an animal wherein you need to measure the urine output, you need to make sure that there is steady flow of urine, or you need to monitor the quality or the color of the urine, then you need to connect the catheter to a urine receptacle. Now, urine bags are commercially available for everyone, all right? They usually have gradations. As you can see, they, it has lines to help you quantify the urine output of your animal. Why is that important? Why is it important for you to measure the amount of urine coming out of an animal? It's not common. Um, honestly, when I was practicing here after graduation, I thought they were just um, connecting the receptacle or the urine bag just for it not to be messy. Because sometimes, if um, oh well, most of the time, if you just leave the catheter out, your animal will be drenched in its own urine because it's not really peeing anymore, right? So I thought it was just for neatness and cleanliness. But right now, it's very important because... For any animal that you are giving fluid therapy to, you need to monitor how much of the fluids are removed, right? Uh, the normal urine output for dogs is 20 to 40 ml per kilo per day. I repeat, the normal urine output for dogs is 20 to 40 milliliters per kilo per day, while in cats, the normal output is only 28 milliliters per kilo per day. Again, for cats, 28 milliliters per kilo per day. So, if you're able to drain 100 ml of urine in 4 hours from a 5 kilo dog, then it gives you a better picture of how much fluid is being lost by the animal. Is, is 100 ml in 4 hours normal? for a five kilo dog, do your computations and find out. Now, if urine bags that you just saw are unavailable, which is quite a stretch these days, 
Um, the urine catheter can also be connected to an IV drip line connected to an empty IV bag. However, this still works with gravity. Same thing as your fluid therapy, this is just a reverse. The animal must be placed on an elevated cage and the bag that receives the urine is placed near the floor below the patient to keep draining urine. If you just put the urine bag at the same level of the animal, it simply won't work. Right? Remember, your fluids need to be positioned higher than the animal for it to flow out. It employs the same concept here. Now, that I, uh, now that I have uh, given you a primer for what you need in urinary catheterization, let's discuss how to prepare our patients for this. Click on the next video.